So when, when people usually speak about their certain areas of interest, two distinct categories usually come to mind. Um, the reason why people usually do this is because they tend to categorize things to make things sound more understandable to them. Because it, it's just two simple things. You, you just have two things. It's easier to understand. So um, when, uh, when pe people categorize this way, it's because of human nature, like I said. And they either delve into their connections with the more practical worlds in the maths and sciences, or they delve into their connections with the more um, abstract or subjective fine arts and humanities. But we really can't categorize this way because we've been bridging the distant gap between these two categories or subject areas for a very long time. We just haven't noticed it yet. And we do with the language that doesn't speak in tongues, but yet speaks with our ears. Yes, music is a language that embodies abstract concepts, but yet simplifies them simultaneously. And people have been speaking the language of music for thousands of years and interpreting it numerically as well. So right now as I'm speaking to you, my voice resonates in what we call sound waves. So these sound waves, they move through air particles. They push air particles in the air until they can get to something that can be received, also known as your ear right there. That's the, fun the structure of the ear. So they, get, they come through your outer ear and through complex uh, physical mechanisms through your ear until they can be processed in the auditory cortex of your brain, which is the main sound or music processing center in your brain. But do you really think people 200,000 years ago really knew this science? Of course they didn't. So then you might ask me, how did music ever connect the practical maths and sciences with the more, let's say, subjective fine arts and humanities? And my answer to that would be, surely no. Because funny enough, music also explains how abstract concepts and concrete concepts, such as the ones involved with numbers, how they interrelate with each other. So, People began, excuse me, sorry. Um, people began this journey of connecting the concrete maths and sciences with the abstract arts using primitive instruments, such as, like, let's say, the first drum. And with the drum, people had a certain, they felt a so social unity when they played these drums together, like you see in the modern days, you see drumming circles with many people. So with these simple drums, they, they wanted to imitate the sounds that they heard from their surrounding environment. So let's say in Central Africa, where people were to believe to have evolved 200,000 years ago, um, let's say there was a wild animal running for its prey, and the people heard the ruffling of leaves. When they, people hear this noise, they immediately try to imitate it, because it's something new that they discovered, something new that they want to copy themselves. So what they do is, since it's so abstract to imitate, they take it and they make a rhythm out of it and they play it on a drum, let's say. So one of these fundamental rhythms that started, let's say, music composition was a simple 4-4 rhythm. A 4-4 rhythm is when you play four beats in one unit or one measure. That's what we call it in music. And the way uh, it sounds is sort of like this. I can play it on the saxophone. We have one quarter beat is this. And then if we wanted to play one measure, we could play So that's one measure. And if, and if we follow the pattern of a musical composition, you have to have four beats in each of those measures. And rhythms such as these created the foundations of music, which was to be formed by people for the rest of their existence. And this creation of numerically interpreted beats or rhythms that people could imitate are really the first steps which people took to make their world more understandable to them. For the original things that they heard in their surrounding environment were just too abstract to imitate, just like the sounds that I told you that they probably would have heard. And as humans migrated out of Africa into different areas of the world and populated them, there was an even larger variation of abstract sounds. Twelve sound. basic notes. These are our twelve, the one on top of the bottom row. Those are our 12 basic notes that we have in music. And people got this from the abstract sounds that they heard before that they imitated on instruments. They got 12 basic notes. Now from these notes, we can make scales of let's say seven or eight notes. And you might ask me, um, you might ask me why it, it's not all, a scale is not with all 12 notes. You might ask me, um, 
and why the scale with just eight notes? And that's because people, people in music determine that there's a certain pattern you have to follow in order for a musical scale to sound necessarily good to the human ear. So let me demonstrate how we can make a scale together. Let's make a scale together. Let me pick a random letter from our 12 notes. Let's say the note C. I'll start on C. It sounds like this. And then if I want to uh, progress in the scale, there's two different types of ways I can go a note from C. There's a whole note, which is when I'm, I skip C, uh, I skip C sharp, which is in the middle of C and D, as you can see on the diagram, and I go from C directly to D. So it's, it's, it's going to sound like this. It's going to sound like this. So those are the two notes played in progression. And this note I skipped, if you want to see what the note I skipped sounded like, would be this. So instead of going like this, I went. So I skipped that middle note, the C sharp. But let's say I wanted to go a half step. I would go, a, a ha and a half step is really the, the next note directly from the first one. So I would go. That's a, half, that's a half step. So that's the difference between a half step and a whole step. So in music, they de determined a certain pattern from these 12 notes and the half steps and whole steps to make a whole scale. So if we start on D, I mean, if we start on C, sorry, um, we can go. That's our first whole step. Our second whole step is going to be from D to E. And we're skipping E sharp, as seen on our diagram. So. So we skipped D sharp, and we went to E. And then now we went two whole steps. We went like this. And then we went. And then we're going to go from E and go a half step to F. So we're going to go. And then so now our pattern so far has been whole, whole, half. Whole step, whole step, half step. Next, we're going to go from. F to G. We're going to skip F sharp as we're going another whole step. We're going to go. That's another whole step. We're going to go another whole step from G to A and skipping G sharp. Another whole step from A to B, skipping A sharp. And then another whole step, I mean, a half step from B, because um, there's no note in between B and C. We just go directly to C, which is our starting note. So all together, the scale would sound like this. That's our whole C scale right there demonstrated. But do you really see like the perfection? I mean, do you hear the perfection and harmony in that scale? I just took 12 notes that I determined from, let's say, hearing abstract noises or sounds from my surrounding environment, and I scaled it down to 12, and then I scaled it down to 7. But this was abstract in the beginning, right? So it's not really concrete, so concrete like this. We can't make it concrete like this, though it sounds good when we play it. And a phenomenon to explain that is called sound waves. So there's four different types of sound waves. Each of these 12 notes that I played can resonate at a different sound wave frequency, or the length of a sound wave. These four types are a quieter sound wave, a louder sound wave, a lower pitched sound wave, or a higher pitched sound wave. And those are their shapes shown right there. So I can interrelate these different types of sound waves. I can make a quieter low pitch sound wave. I can make a quieter high pitch sound wave. I can make a louder low pitch sound wave, or I can make a louder higher pitch sound wave. And with this combination, with this ability, we can make millions of different types of sound waves. There's an infinite number of them, just like there's an infinite amount of numbers that we can compute in our universe. And we, so really, we could have a multitude of notes more than 12, but People always do this. In, in, in human nature, we always do this. We take something that was first very abstract. We didn't understand it, like our sounds in our surrounding environment. We made it 12 notes, though there's like 10,000, more than 
thousands of sound waves, and then we made it into a C scale that sounded good to our ears. And people do this in, in a normal life. They, they, they do this daily. Like, let's say, take an inanimate object like a water bottle. Let's say a water bottle. And you can measure a water bottle's height in either inches or centimeters, right? So with, with this ability to measure it in either inches or centimeters, um, um, they're gonna, there's going to be a different quantity in the, the length of the height of our bottle. So if we measure the height of our bottle in inches, we get a lower quantity, because inches are smaller than centimeters. But if we measure the height of our bottle in centimeters, we get a higher quantity, because we ourselves made centimeters a less of a length than inches. So wh what is this really? Why am I explaining to you what, what this is? It's because, I, in, just like in music, where there were thousands of sound waves, but yet I, I scaled them down to just 12 single notes, 12 individual notes, I, I, can, I had an infinite number of ways I could measure the length of the height of a water bottle, but made it into stu two standard units of measurements so I could get a direct quantity. That's much easier to understand than 10,000 different ways to measure the height of a bottle. So, um, it's, so this is, it's just like music where we made up the 12 notes, we made up inches, we made up centimeters. And there's even evidence to show that music helps people to perceive the abstract. There's, in fact, a theory called the Mozart effect, which is basically when people hear complicated melodies or rhythms as opposed to silence, their abilities to comprehend, let's say, visual images or puzzles or details in images, like, let's say, art pieces, are enhanced. And that's be really because music is so abstract. Now, we'll, let, let's read an abstract from... Um, uh, from a research report by Kristen M. Nateas from the University of Windsor in Windsor, Canada, and E. Glenn Schellenberg from the Uni University of Toronto in Mississauga, Canada, entitled The Mozart Effect, an Artifact of Presence. So this is our abstract right now. It says, The Mozart Effect, reported by Rosher, Shaw, and Kai, those are three musical psychologists, indicates that spatial temporal abilities are enhanced after listening to music composed by Mozart. We replicated and extended the effect in experiment one. Experiment one is an experiment that they did in their research report. Performance on a spatial temporal task was better after participants listened to a piece composed by Mozart or by Schubert, two famous classical composers, than, than after they sat in silence, so as opposed to silence. So what this really is saying is that the details in images are abstract, and there's an infinite number of details in an image that you could perceive. Just like there's an infinite number of sound waves that we could produce in the universe. But when people hear music complexity, when they hear those tons of different sound waves at different length frequencies, they have already had practice hearing and processing those sound waves, that multitude of sound waves. So they have a better, they, they have a better ability to perceive the multitude of details that are in images or in a visual puzzle as they did in this experiment. And that's really how the abstract and concrete interrelate. There's multiple ways to interrelate the concrete and abstract, but music is just one of them. It takes abstract notes or sound that we hear in multiple different frequencies, assigns a quantity to them, like the 12 notes, and then we can make them even more concrete, like, and we can make patterns out of them, like the C scale that we play. Even if music doesn't appeal to you, doesn't appeal to your ears, to your sound, or it sounds like crackling pots and pans to you, like they did here at this festival, those crackling pots and pans either crack at a higher sound or a lower sound. And those quantities we can measure by, those, those uh, frequencies we can measure by quantities, higher or lower. You might say you're good in the more abstract and subjective fine arts or humanities, or you might say you're more good at the concrete, more practical maths and sciences, but you're not good at either of them. Because there's no difference, like we just said right here. You're really just good at music. Thank you very much. <laughs>